Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to God's House of Worship. Morning worship. God's House of Worship located at 3818 Dorchester Road in North Charleston, South Carolina. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I am so grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I don't know about you, but it's a wonderful thing to be in the presence of the Most High God. Come on and worship with me just for a few minutes. Come on and worship. Open your mouth unto the Lord. Come on, let's begin to give God glory. Let's begin to give him honor. He's so worthy of all the glory. And he's so worthy of all the honor. Because there's nobody like our God. And God, I bless your name. And I give you glory. And I give you honor. And I give you praise. Come on, begin to bless the Lord. Open your mouth and give God glory. Hallelujah. God, you're a wonderful God. You're a mighty Savior. You're our Redeemer, our King. You are our everything. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but there's something about this God that we serve. Hallelujah. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He's always right there by our side. And I bless him. Yes, he is. He's always there, and I bless him. Anybody willing to bless God with me in your homes? Are you willing to bless the Lord? Can you bless him in your kitchen? Can you bless him in your living room? Can you bless him in your bedroom? Come on and open your mouth. Hallelujah. Come on and call for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Call for heaven to come down to the earth. Hallelujah. Because when the glory of God shows up, oh my God, when the glory shows up, hallelujah, the manifested presence of our true and living God, when God shows up, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so I bless him. Yes, I do. I bless him. Yes, I do. I bless the Lord. And I give him all the glory. And I give him all the honor. Because he's so worthy. He's so worthy to be praised. And there's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Nobody woke me up this morning but God. Hallelujah. Nobody allowed me to get here this morning but God. Can somebody just say, but God? Hallelujah. But God, when I can't seem to find my way, come on and say it with me. But God. Hallelujah. But God. But God. Hallelujah. When I don't know how I'm going to make it out, when I don't know what I'm going to do from one minute to the next, but God. But God, but God, he's a way maker. Oh, yes, he is. He's a way maker. The Bible says he's a battle axe. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's my way maker. He's my savior, my redeemer. Hallelujah. When I don't know how my bills are going to get paid, somebody say, but God, but God. But God, but God, but God, but my God, but my Savior, my King, my Provider, my Redeemer, but God. But God, but God, he'll make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. He'll put water in the desert. Hallelujah. In your dry places, somebody hear me. In your dry places, he'll cause it to rain. Hallelujah. He'll put water in the desert. But God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God glory this morning. We give God praise. Hallelujah. And we bless his name. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. 
We praise God from whom all blessings flow. All of our blessings, all of our blessings, every last one of them, hallelujah, all of our blessings, we praise God, hallelujah, from whom all blessings flow. Praise He, all creatures, all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. We praise you. Yes, God. We magnify you. We glorify you in this place. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. As all of my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. All of my help, every bit of it, it comes. It comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I can't make it, he comes and help me. Yes, he does. When I can't find my way, he sends his light to guide me and to lead me. All of my help. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hey, God. Yes, God. All of my help. All of my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. Yes, God, I thank you. And I bless your holy and your righteous name. I thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful to you, God. So grateful. So grateful. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our morning scripture comes now from Psalms 121. Hallelujah. Psalms 1, Psalm 121. Help from the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 121. 121, Psalm 121, and it reads this way, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. For Father, all of my help comes from you. And so Father, we've gathered here today to say thank you. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you for being our help, God. Thank you for being our strength, God. Thank you for being our everything. For we realize, God, that without you, we're nothing. For if it had not been for the Lord God that was on our side, God, we don't know where we would be right now. But because you've been on our side, 
our right side, our left side, and our front, and in our back, all around us, God. We stand today to give you glory and to give you honor. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy. There's nobody that can do for us what you can. And because of that, we want to say thank you. There's nobody that can heal our bodies. Nobody that can set us free. Nobody that can deliver us like you, God. And so we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for all that you are in our lives. All that you've been from the rocking of the cradle, even up until this very moment. You've been good. You've been good and you've been kind. And we bless your name. And so now, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask now, God, that your glory would fill this place. We call for your glory, God. Because when your glory shows up, when your glory shows up, God, hallelujah, demons got to flee. When your presence shows up, God, when heaven comes down to earth, hallelujah, hearts are mended, bodies are healed, people are set free. Father, we need your glory. We ask, God, that your glory fill this place and that your presence, God, consume us. Consume us, God, so we'll know without a shadow of a doubt that your presence is here with us. Consume us, God, like a consuming fire. We bless you. We bless you. We declare our love for you, God. We thank you so much. Now, God, in Jesus' name, we pray for the man of God that will bring the word. We pray that you would allow him to go deeper and deeper in your treasures. That God, when he comes up to speak to your people, he'll speak your oracles. He'll speak your word, God. Your word, God, that will make a difference in the hearts of people, in the lives of your people. We thank you. We thank you for these people that are in this place, God, who counted not robbery to come into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. That we may come together, bind hearts and minds and spirits together, that we might worship you. So we thank you. So we bless you. We pray for those that are watching by means of Facebook Live and YouTube, God that that same anointing that same glory that we feel in this place uh, will consume their homes uh, their cars wherever they may be and so we thank you we thank you now and for this waiting congregation open up their hearts and their minds uh, to receive your word we pray for the sick everywhere, the incarcerated, and we pray for the unsaved souls, God, that somebody might be saved. Someone might hear this word and cry out, what must I do to be saved? We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name, and we give you all glory. We give you all honor, and Father, we give you all praise. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, the anointed Lamb of God, in his name we pray. And we count all things done. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Denzel, keep that in mind. Drop it down, a key for me. God's house of worship, morning declaration. Hallelujah. We are the church that welcomes the presence and the move of God. We are the church that lives to be a light in the lowland. 
I am the church that pursues a life that's holy and acceptable unto the word of God. I am the church that's rewarded here on earth what is also mine in heaven. God's house of worship. We, come on, point to yourself. God's house of worship. We, we, we are the church. You are the church. Hallelujah. God's house of worship. We are the church. Once again, we welcome all of you that are here in the building. Bless God for you. Thank you so much for being here. We honor your presence. We don't take it lightly. We honor your presence here in the house of the Lord. And we honor the presence of all of you that are watching by means of Facebook Live and YouTube. Hallelujah. But we honor most of all our Lord and our Savior, our King and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. In the form of announcements, we're going to ask you, please, don't forget October 21st and October 22nd. Bishop, 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 Bishop Jacobs will be in the house. Oh, my God. If you just look him up on YouTube. Oh, God, I watched this man the other day. Oh, my God. If you would just look him up on YouTube, Bishop Brandon Jacobs. Look him up on YouTube. You will be so blessed with the word that he brings to the people of God. And so he's coming to our city. He's coming to Charleston, South Carolina. He's coming here to God's house of worship on October 21st and 22nd. Come on, let's fill the house and welcome him to Charleston. He's coming along with his praise and worship team, his, his praise and worship leader, as well as his musicians. And so we bless God for for this grand event that will take place on October 21st and 22nd here at God's House of Worship. Spread the word for me. Take that flyer that's been posted and that video that's posted out there and share it with your friends, share it with your family so we can pack this house on October 21st and 22nd and welcome Bishop Brandon Jacobs to the Charleston area. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. On August 14th, August 14th, which is a couple of weeks from now, God's House of Worship will, uh, will host a free haircut day for young boys that are going back to school. I know most of the young men now are wearing dreads and whatever, but if you need a stock, a, cut, a shape up, whatever, you, your son needs a haircut, we're going to ask you to meet us here at God's House of Worship on August 14th. We will have some barbers in the house, and they're going to be doing some haircuts for our men in the community and the surrounding community, and we're going to be giving away some school supplies. It's on a first-come, first serve basis and so we're going to ask you to make plans to be there so your son can get a haircut before he goes back to school on the 17th for they before they go back to school on the 17th they'll be able to get a haircut here at God's house of worship and we will be giving away some school supplies I believe that is from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. in the afternoon so you all put that on your calendar as well. We have some well-qualified barbers that will be here on Saturday, August 14th, here at God's House of Worship from 11 until 3 p.m. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. All righty. I think I'm going to sing a little bit of my help, and then um, I'm going to this great man of God is going to come. He's going to come with the word of God. I know it's going to be a great word. He's been preparing for this word day and night. And I bless the Lord for him. And he's going to come. The Apostle Alfonso Carl Riley is going to come and bring a word from the Lord. A word from the Lord for the people of God. 
And for those of you that are out there in Facebook land and you want to partake with us in Holy Communion, we're going to ask that even now that you prepare your sacraments. So when we're ready for Holy Communion, your sacraments will already be prepared and you can partake with us as we remember Christ in Holy Communion. Amen following a little bit of the singing of this song. God help me, y'all. I'm not a singer anymore, but we're going to go through and sing a little bit of this song, My Help. from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, he will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth me, he will not slumber nor sleep, for the, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord, he is thy shade upon thy right hand. Upon thy right hand No, the sun shall not smite thee by day Nor the moon by night He shall preserve thy soul Even forevermore Oh, my help, my help, my help, all of my help cometh from the, the Lord. to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, he will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth me, he will not slumber nor sleep, for the, the Lord is my keeper, the Lord, he is my shade upon thy right hand. Upon thy right hand No, the, the sun shall not smite thee by day Nor the moon by night He shall preserve thy 
sold even forever evermore the Lord. Apostle Riley's coming now. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Apostle Riley's coming now with a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 That was an awesome song. And it's one that we must have understanding in. That is a knowing that all of my help cometh from the Lord. I don't hear, I really don't care how good a job you might have. I don't care what you think that you accomplished and what you did, but, but let me tell you something. Without God, nothing is possible. But with God, all things are possible. Sometimes because God has blessed us so much and we've attained this and we've attained that, that, that we kind of put God on the back burner for a minute. Am I talking right? We put God kind of behind because I got a little money in the bank. I got three or four cars to ride in. I really don't need a whole. I got a family. I got, I got everything. I got my health. I got my strength. I got my mind. Everything's going pretty good with me now. I believe I can make it all by myself. Well, let me tell you something, saints of God. God will stop you right in your tracks. He'll stop you right in your tracks. Hear me good, somebody. It ain't all sick people dying out there, man. Am I talking right? It ain't this all old people dying out there. Am I talking right? You better recognize that all of your help, all of your help coming from the Lord. Nobody else. Mama and daddy help out every now and then. Friends come to your rescue, but, but can't nobody do you like the Lord. Nobody. Amen. We are under the spirit of Christ in this house today. We are under the presence of all of you in this house for this time of worship. And we believe by faith that you're not here by chance or choice, but God has ordained that you should be here for such a time as this. We give tribute and honor to Elder Dr. Riley, my wife and executive pastor of God's House of Worship. You can give her a round of applause if you like. Amen. But we appreciate her. She makes a difference. 
to my son Denzel on the keyboard because music blesses the word, amen. And God has anointed him to bring a ministry in his music. For Mother Jones that has helped with us, we thank God for her. And I mean, if Mother Jones can make it out, ain't nobody got no excuse. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for everybody here today. And we thank you for those who are visiting us for the first time who, who just came into the house. And we thank God for you. And we pray today that there should be a word that would bless you, that would encourage you and strengthen you and, and, and cause you to see life a little bit differently. Going back to that song that all of your help, all of it cometh from the Lord. It's not the rabbit foot. It's not the Ouija board. It's not the four-leaf clover, and it ain't Dr. Buzzard, but all your help cometh from the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Exodus? The book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Exodus, the 32nd chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. And as we find it, I ask you to rest upon your feet that we shall be able to read together. And I pray, God, everyone who is watching us in the cyber will be prepared for Holy Communion upon the completion of this service. Amen. So I should have your drink your, your, and your bread together so that we can eat and drink and celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen. And the word of God reads this way. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the wrath of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and says unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land will I have spoken of, will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. And the tables were written on both sides, on the one side and on the other side they were written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was on the writing of God's graven upon his table. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, they shouted. He said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither it is the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but it is the voice, it is the, but the noise of them sing, do I hear. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh into the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing and Moses angered wax hot. And he cast the tablets out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. Turn with me to the 33rd chapter, looking at the 17th verse of the 33rd chapter. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this day, Lord, to give your name praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. For, Lord, you are worthy of all the praise. We thank you now, God, for allowing us to be in this place at this time. We pray for clarity and knowledge and wisdom to speak and to teach your word, Father God. We pray now, Father, for a fresh anointing among me and among your people, Father God, that you will open their ears to hear what thus saith the Lord, Father. For today we came to hear a word from heaven. Now, God, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit resonating in this house and among us, Father God, as your word go forth. So, God, give me clarity and boldness to speak and to teach your word that the people shall hear and their lives shall never, ever be the same. So, God, we thank you now for the move of the Spirit in this house. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. God's people said amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. Verse 18 in the 33rd chapter says this. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. We've had this word, and God has shown me this word many times before. And, and, but today, God showed me something new in the word. Amen. Something new in the word. And we want to share this with you today. We find in our life as Christian that we may be blood washed, born again, baptized believer. But, but there comes a time in our life where, where we encounter troubling situations. Amen. We all go through those situations sometime. And, and it begins to the point we begin to wonder if God is really with us. Because we understand that sometimes we have to make decisions for the people of God. Amen. Be it a parent, be it a leader, be it the pastor, whatever your situation might be in life, we have to make decisions that can change people's lives. And sometimes we become fearful because we understand that, that not only can they go astray and God will hold me accountable for them, but for myself as well. Be, because what I do in the fact is that I represent God. And this being the case, we need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the decisions that we make are under the approval of God. Have you ever been there? I don't want to lead anybody astray. I don't want to tell anybody the wrong thing. But what I do want to do is tell what thus saith the Lord, that, that the word of God is on the inside of me, and that which I say unto you is what God would have me to say to you. We have familiar scriptures that we read all the time that says, Trust in the Lord with, with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but, but in all thy ways he shall direct your path. Now, now this scripture give us strength because it is a profound word to, to know that it is not so much trusting in ourselves, but, but trusting God to lead us to make the right decision according to his will. Because we understand sometimes people's lives rest in our hands. Amen. The rise and fall sometimes rests in our hands. Not always so much by the thing we say, but how we live our lives according to the word of God. But I found out in this short lifetime of mine that, 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 that you've got to pray to have a relationship with God. You've got to never cease to pray. You've got to understand the word of God that the effectual fervent prayer of, of the righteous does avail of us. But, but how can you expect to, to know God's voice when you don't talk to him? How can you expect to have a relationship with God when you're not willing to time to spend time with him? How can you expect to really have a, a Christian walk when you don't spend any time with God? When was the last time you studied your word? When was the last time you spent time with God? When was the last time you just laid before God without asking for anything? Just laid before him and say, God, fill me up. Lord, fill me up with your word. Fill me up with your anointing that I may go before the people and represent you. The Lord said, my people are destroyed with lack of knowledge. See, but the bottom line is you can't teach what you don't know and you can't lead where you don't go. If nothing's in you, nothing's going to come out of you. You see, Paul wrote these words and said that the time will come when, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but, but they shall heap to themselves itchy ears, and at their own lust shall, shall they go in that direction. The truth they really don't want to hear, but sometimes people want to hear some stuff that satisfy their flesh. Am I talking right? They want to hear something that make me feel good, not so much the thing that's going to save my life. But we find people get caught up when they're walking outside of the will of God. But Christian friend, let me say this to you today. The Bible declared that we are servants of the most high God. We that walk according to will have to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. We find now as we look through the scripture that, that Moses is now spending time with God. 
He's up in Mount Sinai, and God is giving him the laws of the land, the laws which is to cover the kingdom of God. And not only that, but he's preparing him to build a tabernacle. He's telling everything that's to go inside of it, everything that has to be laid around it, the dimensions and everything. He is preparing him for greater works. But we find now because Moses had left the people, because they have recently come out of the land of Egypt, the people now begin to panic. Walk with me, somebody. You know, as long as we're in the presence of the church, as long as we're in the presence of the word, we can do pretty good by ourselves. Am I talking right? We can do good things because we hear the word on a regular basis. We are taught on a regular basis. But sometimes we find ourselves that we are left ourselves. We find that the devil has a way of trying to slip in the house. Amen. Many people nowadays, because they've been out of the house of the Lord for so long, are finding out that things are not going as well as they used to be. Many people are getting sicker than what they used to have. Many people are having more trials and tribulation. Why? Because they have allowed the world to take over their mind. We find now the children of God who God brought out of Egypt and caused ten plague upon the land and proved to them that he was God. They say now that Moses is gone. And Moses has left his brother Aaron in charge. So we don't know what has happened to this man. So they employ him, Aaron, now to, to build us a statue. Amen. Because we don't know what happened to Moses. See, understand this, Christian friend. You got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the presence of the Lord is always with you. Amen. God should not have to prove himself over and over and over again to us that we might know that he's real. Because there's something you just got to know why. Because it's in me. It's just in me. He now tells the people to get their ornaments. Get their gold and the silver and bring it to me. And he builds them a statue. He builds them a golden calf and, and, and builds them a staff and, and presents it to them. They say, now, this is our God that brought us out of Egypt. Come on, somebody. He just built that calf this morning. Now, how could that calf that he built this morning brought you out of Egypt? Somebody talk to me. Come down. We got to use common sense. We got to use common sense sometime. Well, God has been with me all the time. Then why all of a sudden I'm going to start worshiping something else? Why am I going to honor something else when it's God that has kept me and it's been God that has blessed me throughout all these years? Why should I turn now? Why should I walk away from God now? Because they needed to see something. God now tells Moses, Go ahead down to your people. Amen. Go ahead down to them because they have broken my commandments. They have turned their backs on me and allowed their flesh to take charge of them. He said, I'm ready right now just to consume them all. But Moses pleaded. It's good to have somebody to stand in the gap for you. Moses pleaded to God not to kill them, Lord. Don't kill God. Let me go down and talk to them. Moses goes down with, with, the, with the Ten Commandments on the tablets in his hand, and, and he takes it, and he throws it at the foot of the mountain and destroys it. He gets into the town, and the music is loud. Christian friend, they're having a party in God's place, amen. They're having a party down there. It's so good that they're having an orgy down there. People are drinking, getting drunk, getting naked, just doing whatever they want. Why? Because the flesh has now risen up on the inside of them. Walk with me, somebody. Sometimes I don't care how rooted you are. Paul says this, that when I would do good, Evil is present with me. I don't care how rooted and strong in the words you are, you still got some stink in you. You still got a little nasty on the inside of you. But we pray to God to keep us oppressed. But every now and then you find yourself in a situation where you allow it to rise up. Why? Because you turn your back on God. You give place to the world and place God in the back seat. But yet still you want God to bless you. Come on, somebody. Can God count on you to stand firm in the midst of all the madness? Can God count on you to be to behold his beauty and share the gospel with somebody? But will you be willing to give up and turn your back like everybody else? 
Moses proceeded to find out what's going on. And he says to them, after he finds out the mess from, from his brother Aaron, because Aaron said, you know these people, don't get so upset now. Don't get so, because these people are hard-headed, stiff-necked people. They came to me with some earrings and gold, said they wanted a, a special God built. So I took it and I put it in the oven, boom, bam, look at here. Look what came out. He forgot to mention that he carved it, that he shaped it, that he made it. But now he tried to clear it himself. But let me say this for a second. Let me interject this. Even though he built a golden image against God, don't you know God eventually made him the high priest, the original high priest in his kingdom? Help me good, somebody. I don't care how straight you go. Amen. I don't care how off track you get. God can still use you. Yes, he can. If you would just repent of your sin, God can still use you. Because God sees something in you that nobody else could see. He's got great plans for you. He's got to work with your name on it, nobody else. And he's going to use you to accomplish the task. Moses looked at the people and said, Who's on the Lord's side? Come on, somebody. The question is that, who is on the Lord's side? The Bible said the Levites stepped out immediately, stood by Moses, and they took their sword out. And he said, go through them, men and women, anyone, anyone that's not on the Lord's side, and kill them. I don't care if it's your daddy. I don't care if it's your brother, your cousin, your son, or your nephew. He said, kill them. That day, 3,000 people were put to death. Now we find Moses going back to God, trying to teach you something, y'all. He goes back to God and intercedes on the people's behalf. And he said, Lord, please go with us. Please go. Don't, 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 don't leave us alone. Don't kill us. Alone. So God repented. And, and, and repented is only a word that man uses because there is no word to describe God. It's called an anthropomorphism, which is a word of human origin when we can't think of nothing else to describe him. So we make up a word, and they said the word repent. And so now we find now that, that God said, tell you what, I won't kill them, but I'm not going to go with them. He said, what I am going to do is say my angel with them. Now before the presence of God had been with them in the, pres in the form of a pillar of cloud. But now we find that God is pulling back because God said if I go with them I just might consume them. Because they had angered God. He now goes back. He now goes back to the people again. And he tells them what God says. So, so what they do now is take off their ornaments again. And they take them and place them to the side as a sign of, of humility before God. And Moses goes back and tells God what, what has happened. And now God says this to him. He said, because well, Moses asked the question again, God, I want you to go with us. You're talking about sending your angel with us. But God, I don't want your angel. Walk with me, somebody. He said, what I want is your presence to be with us. I understand clearly what's about to take place here. What Moses pray is for God to go with him. I don't necessarily need the benefits of God, which we find ourselves in revival experience, that, that we have a desire to get the benefits of God, but, but we don't want us to have God himself. Let me tell you something, Christian friend. If you got God's presence, you, you got everything else. But sometimes we find ourselves caught up in the things that God has given us. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. They felt because they had the temple that everything would work well. Let me tell you something, Christian friend. You got to get closer to God. He said to God, he said, God, show me. Your glory, Lord. Show me your glory, Lord. And that's when we say your glory is called the kabob, the manifested presence of God. The manifested presence and literally the weight of God. I need the God's presence to be with me. I need God with me. I don't want the angel. But God, I want you to be with me. We go through some things sometimes. And I don't need this or that, but, but what I need is to know that God is with me. Walk with me sometime. 
because I get tired of something. I can read my Bible all day long, but, but if I don't know God's presence is with me, I still don't have anything. I can come to the house of the Lord, but if I don't know God's presence is with me, I'm still a mess out there. We have to seek God's face. we got to be drawn closer and closer to God. I thank God for the benefit, but what I need now is God. I need him personally walking and talking in my life. I don't want all the time the things of God, but I need God. Can you hear what I'm saying? It ain't nothing wrong with the blessing. It ain't nothing wrong with the benefits, but I need God. Because he promised to keep me. He promised to provide for me. And if his presence is with me, I don't worry about those petty things out there. You see, when God becomes flesh in my life, when God becomes flesh and his presence becomes real, then I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that no weapons formed against me shall ever prosper. You see, God's glory lies in his goodness. So he tells Moses what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let my goodness go before you. Come on, somebody. You see, the Bible said that God is good and his mercy endureth forever. So if his goodness comes with him, understand this clearly. God said, you couldn't handle my glory, amen. You couldn't handle seeing my face is what you asked for. Because if no man has seen my face and live. You see, I understand this. If his word can cause the sun to shine. If his word can cause the rivers to flow, if his word can put fishes in the ocean, if his word can change Sunday to Monday to Tuesday to Thursday, if his word can cause these things come to pass, I understand what his face would do. If you saw the face of God, you wouldn't want to live because the glory is too much. But now we find here Moses talking to God, and God said, I, I hear what you're saying, Moses. But because you are a friend of mine, there is a place up in the mountain. And there is a cleft on the inside of mountain that I have prepared for you. He said, what I want you to do, Moses, is go up on the mountain and stand. Hear me good, somebody. Sometimes God wants to prove himself to you. God wants to show himself to you. But God doesn't want you to do but one thing. Just stand. God wants you to trust him. Just stand. Having done all, stand. Just stand, mother. I want you to go in the mountain and just stand there. And when you stand there, I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to put you in the cleft. I remind that song that says, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Because you see, I found a hiding place. I found a place I can go to where the hands of the Lord will cover me, where the hands of God will shield me, where the hands of God will keep me. I'm in the presence of the Lord. God said, what I will do is allow you to see my hind part. You see the residue of his glory, but you couldn't handle the whole glory. I'll shield you there. I'll cover you there. I'll protect you there. Because your desire is to see me. Your desire is to have my presence with you. And it is the presence of the Lord that makes all the difference in the world. Moses just didn't want to have the, the, the finer things of life. But he wanted to have the knowledge of knowing that I just see God's face. Not so much his hand, because we find ourselves always seeking the hand of God. What I can get from God. We pray to God not just to be our God, but we pray God for some of everything. God fix my wife. God fix my husband. God fix my marriage. God fix my health. God do this and God do that. But, but you don't understand. Sometimes you need to just get to know God. When you understand the power and the relationship that God has for us, we will understand that if we have the presence of God, he comes with his benefits. 
For some time, we could have the benefits of God and still go through hell. Am I talking right? We can have all the benefits. We, we can have a beautiful edifice and still people are dying left and right. We can have the most beautiful marriage on the outside, but all hell goes on on the inside. We can look like a picture of hell, but our body is decaying on the inside. But when we got God, when we've got his presence, and God shows us his glory, we'll know beyond the shadow of a doubt that with God, all things are possible. Let me tell you something, Christian friend. Understand true revival. True revival is not about benefits. When people come to revival, they come looking for a phenomenon. They're looking for a miracle. They're looking for signs. They're looking for wonders. They're looking for healing. They're looking for all this. What they are looking for the things of God. But they're not looking for God. Come on, somebody. It's when Jesus walked the land. They, they really didn't give a hoop about Jesus that much. People came flocking him because they wanted something from him. Have you ever gone to God without making requests? Huh? You ever just went and just communed with God? Just worship him? Just bow down yourself before him? That's what Moses was talking about. He said, Lord, I just want your presence. Because if I got your presence, I know I'll make it through. It may be hard, it may be challenging, but God, if your presence is with me, I know I'll make it through. If we understand that God's glory is all we're looking for, we just want his presence. I understand the benefits, but I'm not caught up in the benefits. When I pay my tithe, when I give my offerings, I give it out of obedience unto God. I'm expecting a return on it. But that's not the point why I'm giving it. I'm giving it because God has said to do it. We're so concerned about, about whether God will hear it, whether God will do it. Sometimes you need to check yourself up, Christian friend. God's word will never come back void. Never, ever. He'll do just what he said. You don't give expecting something. And I'm not trying to throw anybody off a little bit. God's going to bless you. But that cannot be our motivation for, for giving something. You can't help somebody without expecting something. You can't give somebody a ride without them paying for your gas. You can't give somebody something to eat without looking for something. You need something for everything you do when you call yourself a Christian. Can't you just help somebody? Can't you just bless somebody every now and then? Moses got it right. He just wanted God's presence. He wasn't worried about getting to the promised land because God already said he'd take the people. He promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that they would get there. I'm not worried about that. God has already said that. But I need to be able to look and see the face of God. I don't want nothing. It's like my wife. I, I see her and that's enough for me. I don't need her to do anything. She's sitting there looking at her phone and me watching TV, whatever. It's a joy to know that they're there with you, amen. And that's how we ought to feel with God. God, if we don't say nothing, we just sit here, sitting here. I'm just enjoying the presence of the Lord. It is glory, the essence of God. Can you walk into your house and feel him? Come on, somebody. You walk into this house. Do you feel him when you push the doors of this tabernacle? Music not playing yet, singing not going on, preaching, teaching not. But when y'all walk into this, I felt the presence of God. Hear me good, somebody. 
what we need to sustain us in this life is the glory of God. Somebody walking with me on this right here. That's all I need, Tika. Just the glory. I need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's here with me. I got to feel him in my spirit. I have to see him with my sanctified eyes. You with me, Donna? You understand what I'm saying, Maurice? You with me, Mother Jones? She, Elder Ryan? Y'all, y'all with me on this right here. I just need to know that God is with me. And guess what? All fear. All fear is gone. You know, I may have a gun in my mouth to miss a enemy, but, but it, there's no guarantee the gun's going to work. But if I got God, come on, somebody. I got all I need. We desire his presence. We desire his glory. And Christian friend, we settle for nothing less. Nothing less. Thank you, God, for the benefits. Thank you for the food on the table. Thank you for the clothes on the blank. But give me Jesus. There's a song that says, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Come on, somebody. If I got Jesus, I'm still going to get all that I need. Silver and gold can pass away. Some of us in here are old enough to remember when Hugo came along. People had money and still had nothing. Am I talking right? But then God provided a way. He brought us through us because his presence is there with us. I'm encouraging you today. I'm encouraging you today. Seek his glory. Seek his presence. Seek the manifested presence of God in your life. And I promise you, everything, everything will fall in place. Isn't that good to know? You know, you see, understand this. We serve a God with benefits. Yeah, we do. We serve a God with benefits. So you think if I just ask God for his glory, his presence and not for this or that that he's going to leave his benefits behind? No. He comes with them. How do I know that? Because he said it is my desire that you should live life abundantly. Come on somebody. Define abundantly more than enough. So if his presence is with me that's all I need. That's all I, I'm not worrying about this happening, that happening, my health, my mind, my family, my marriage, my job. I'm not worrying about that. All I want is his presence. That's all. And Christian friend, if we could focus on his face, come on, focus on the face of God and not on the hand of God. Let me say that again. If we could focus on the face of God, seeing him in the spirit, or when he manifests his stuff, his self to us, not so much his hand. Come on. Don't you know his hand is attached to him? Come on, somebody. Where's my hand at? It's attached to me. It comes with me. So wherever I go, my hand is there. But look for me. Look for me, the Lord says. Seek me while I yet can be found. Seek me and I'll bless you. Seek me and whatever you need, I'll give it to you. Because I'm that kind of God. Don't just look for my bag. I ain't Santa Claus. Don't just look for my gifts. But seek me. Come on, somebody. Get your house in order. Get your mind in order. Seek God first. God said, I'll send my angel. The angel's going to do God's will and God's bidding. But Moses said, God, I, I want you. He said, I don't even know that angel. But God, I know you. And that's what I want. 
I settle for nothing less. I settle for nothing less. God said, well, Al, I want to give you a new car. No, if it doesn't come with you. I don't care if it comes with cruise control or a telephone, but, but does it come with you? Al, I'm going to give you a new house that, that, that's already furnished, but I, I thank you, God, for that. But, but, but does that house come with you? Is your presence there? Because if your presence is not there, it won't last anyhow. So I encourage you today, seek God. Seek a relationship with him. Don't go to him crying, poor mouth. Don't go to him always looking for something. Can we just commune with God every now and then? As the gist of this message, y'all, God just want to talk to you sometime. God just wants you to step out and just, God just wants you to come out there and just, just sit down and say, hey, God, nice weather you got today. You know that? Hey, God, I just want to thank you because you've been so good to me. Hey, God, I'm glad you decided to stop by here. God, I love being in your company. It is bad when we find people, the only time they call us is when they want something. But that's not the kind of God we serve. We seek his face. I encourage you today, seek the face of God and everything else will follow. The scripture says in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Amen. 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 God bless you today. I don't want them to jump up and down message, but it's a word. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. At this time, I make an appeal to you for those who don't know Christ for the pardon of their sin that the day you would make a choice and that choice would be Jesus for your salvation, for your life. Because with God, there's life, but apart from him, there's death. So today, if you don't know Christ for the pardon of your sin, we invite you to choose Jesus. I just want to introduce Jesus to you. The word declares and make it so simple. It said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. I'm speaking to you out there today that you might hear and you might share this word with somebody. Hear the word. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. That's all God wants you to do. And thou shalt be saved. For they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So make that choice today. If I was you, I wouldn't let the sun go down without making Jesus my choice. If I walk out of here, I pray God will arrest you on the sidewalk and bring you closer to him. Amen? Lock you up where you can't sleep. You can't even breathe that well. You choking. You don't know what's going on. God's trying to get your attention. That's what it is. Your very breath is in his hand. But we serve a free will God. We serve a free will God. So if you made Jesus your choice today, I encourage you to connect yourself with a word-based church where you can continue on in the things of the Lord. Amen. At this time, we ask you to prepare yourself for Holy Communion. We ask that everyone who are watching us through the cyber, that you would, I hope you already have your drink and your bread already before you. But we're about to go into Holy Communion. So we ask now that, that we focus on these things. We're not worrying about what happened yesterday or the day before, or even before we came into this house. But we are thinking on Holy Communion that Jesus Christ died for us. He was crucified for us. He paid the ransom for us. He hung on the cross for us. He bore all the sins of the world upon him for us.
concentrate on the things of God this day. Amen. Prepare yourself now. Prepare yourself now. Amen. That was a good word, wasn't it? That's a good word. Seek his face. As we prepare for Holy Communion services, I can just, just start praying to God right now. Giving the Lord thanks for the things that he has done for us. Scripture reading will be coming from Revelation's fifth chapter in its entirety. And the word of God reads, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the numbers of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I sing, blessings and honor and glory and power. Be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. To the Lord, add a blessing to the reading of his word. 
Gracious God, our Father, our King, our eternal God, we come once again today to give your name glory, honor, and praise. And to thank you, God, for Calvary. To thank you, God, that you loved uh, us so much that you sent your only begotten son. And thank you, Jesus, for staying on the cross, shedding your blood and dying for us. And so, Father, at this time, God, we come now to do what Jesus said, that we would remember him. For he said to us, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we thank you now. As we remember Calvary, we ask that you would look down on this table that's been prepared Look on these sacraments, God, that it will become, God, something that is holy and divine unto you. Don't let it become something, God, that is natural, God, or just a habit. But let these sacraments now represent the body and the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, that was shed on Calvary's cross. That we may have a moment just like this, where we can come boldly before your throne and boldly in your presence. And your presence will stay here and sup with us. So we thank you now. We thank you for the partakers. And we thank you for the communion. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And we do give thanks. Amen. Amen. The Bible declares that on the first day of the week that Jesus' disciple came unto him. And they asked the question, Master, where will we make ready the Passover feast? Jesus instructed them to go into the city and there they would see a man bearing a pitcher of water. They said, follow him into the house and there he shall show you a large upper room already prepared. He said, there make ready the Passover feast. The feast has already been prepared and we're now ready to partake of it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We ask everyone that as you receive your sacrament, that you would hold on to it, that we may eat and drink together. Amen. And as you receive your drink, before we drink, I ask you to lift it up over your head, placing everything from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, everything under his feet. Amen.
And when he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. Let us eat together. Let us raise our cups and put every sin under the blood, every heartache, every depression, every oppression, every disappointment, every shortcoming. We put it under the blood now. For what shall wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What shall make us whole again? nothing but the blood of Jesus we put it under blood for he said this is the new test of my blood for as often as you do this you do show the Lord's death until he come let us drink together amen amen Is everyone partaking who has a desire to? Amen. Amen. This now concludes our portion of this Holy Communion service. We thank God for you all who participated. We thank God for you all here today. I encourage you today, seek God's face. Seek God's face. And everything else, everything else shall follow. Let us look unto the Lord. Amen. Hold one second. It's time for offering. Amen. Let's, let's take up the offering first. Amen. The bathroom.